All right, after training in San Diego, uh, there was a class of 45. Three of us were uh, assigned to the USS Indianapolis. Paul Murphy, Paul Mitchell, and myself. A few of the men there went up and raised the flag and everybody around hollered and on the beach they hollered. And, and when you're in the service, every time you are transferred, uh, you have a physical. And when I was in high school, I uh, was very disappointed because I couldn't play sports because I had a heart murmur. And every time I'd have a physical, they'd tell me, well, go and play golf. That's the most strenuous sport you can play. And I was disappointed because the other guys were in sports and I wasn't. There was 10 of us boys and uh, I was the youngest boy. I didn't go to service and the, the oldest one didn't go. And the other eight in between all went to the service. They were all there. And my dad tried to get one deferred and uh, you know, they wouldn't defer him, you know. And my dad, being a Polish immigrant, so well, I knew this family got one deferred, that one got that one deferred, because they came back and worked on the farm. <laughs> but my dad didn't have no farm, so they all had to go. My dad said, can't I have one home to help me with the family? He said, nope, they all got to go. So they, they all went, you know, it, it was hard, it was hard. When he was missing in action for three months, we didn't know where he was. On Christmas, we got noticed that he was missing in action. And uh, on Good Friday, I was walking up to my mother's. I lived on the other side of town, and I was walking up home. And the mailman waved, and he yelled at me, come on over here. And he had a card that my brother had. It was, it was issued by the Germans, and it was printed. Just he had, a, he had to put his name on it, that he was a prisoner. And that's all that was said. The way it works out, when I went to service, they also detected that murmur, but they said it was all right. It, it wouldn't uh, bother me. But every time you're transferred, you get a physical. So when I was assigned to USS Indianapolis, uh, I got my physical. And the doctor said, well, you're probably okay to serve on Indianapolis. Just before the atomic bomb was dropped, we were at Okinawa, and with a lot of ships tied to each other, you could walk from one ship to the other, you know. They called for a mass, a service, I should say. All religions, everybody got on their knees. We knew something was coming. We knew something was coming. But I want you to go ashore and get an EKG of your heart. And uh, when you get that, you can come back. So I went ashore to get the EKG. And uh, the hospital I was at, there was either something wrong with the machine, there was some problem. And the technician said, well, Ed, you'll have to come back tomorrow. I'll give you a slip and you'll get a room at the hotel and come back tomorrow. Well, I went back tomorrow when he got my EKG and he said, well, you're fine, you can go back. Uh, so I went back and my sea bag was on the dock and the ship was gone. Luckiest man in the world. So I went back and uh, was reassigned uh, to shore patrol duty in San Francisco went from San Diego to San Francisco. I was on shore patrol duty for about three days, and then I got assigned to the USS Lang. Then in a couple of days was the atomic bomb. You must remember everybody was scared. We were all 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, fresh out of high school, six months, not six months, six weeks of training at Great Lakes or any other naval base, Army base, the same thing. And then you were assigned to a group. You had to do what you were told to do. Religion was never a part of our ship. Never a part. We had, it was diversified. We had so many, you know. But we had a lot of guys that cried because they knew after that service we had where something big was coming. And uh, I got I had a lump in my throat, there's no doubt. But uh, it never materialized. Believe me, that was, that was the, when, when we got the word and all the flags went up on the yard arms, you know, that was, a, that was a big day in my life. You know, there were 16 million uh, veterans in World War II. There are about 3 million left, and uh, they're dying at a rate of 1,500 a day. So we're going downhill fast as far as World War II veterans.